Hello, uh, thank you so much, Greg, for the introduction. My name is John Businge. I'm an assistant professor at uh, UNLV. I head the software engineering lab here at UNLV. I'm delighted to present you my work in this event, Never Work in Theory, Spring 2023. First, I'd like to thank uh, Brittany and Greg for the invitation on this event. I'll be presenting to you my work on patch clones and means patches among variants of software family. This work has been previously presented at FSC 2022. A special thanks go to uh, the sponsors of this study, Seco Assist. First, let me start by uh, with some context of the study. Some of you may be aware of the Equifax software, which is a credit score software. Equifax was identified with a cyber crime in 2017, which was fixed almost immediately. And this uh, uh, affected over 150 million people and 400 million uh, US dollars was lost. So how did this happen? Equifax has a dependency on uh, an open source software called Apache Strats. Apache Strats identified a vulnerability in March 2017 which was fixed almost immediately. However, Equifax delayed to update the dependency, and two months later, Equifax was identified with a data breach. Equifax could have avoided this problem if it used a recommender system to be notified about vulnerability update. So now let's get into the actual study. What do we mean by the phrases um, variants and software families. In this slide and next slide, I'll explain what the two phrases mean. On a social coding platform, it's common for developers to fork the upstream repository when they want to contribute. There are two types of um, forks, social forks and variant forks. Social forks are quoted for the sole reason of introducing new um, features such as uh, bug fixes, refactorings, or refactorings. And when these uh, uh, features are fully developed, they're integrated back into the main branch or through a pull request or through any other uh, Git means. And that would mark the end of the social fork. Variant forks, uh, on the other hand, are quoted by splitting off the new development branch to steer development into a new direction while leveraging the code of the main or upstream project. They can contribute back, but they are not obliged. They may also have their own uh, forks that contribute back into their main lines. Our focus is on variant forks. And a uh, variant family would be uh, a, a family with two or more variants. So why are we interested in uh, variant folks? This work is motivated by our previous uh, our findings that is published in uh, MZ 2022. We investigated um, three software ecosystems on GitHub of Android, uh, .NET programming language ecosystem and JavaScript programming language ecosystem. And we discovered over 10K variants. This gave us an indication that variants are quite prevalent on GitHub. Furthermore, we also discovered that variants are real, these variants really share updates, which was quite surprising since we expected that they would at least propagate bug fixes in the shared um, code. So let me, let me now, using an illustration, explain the context of the problem of this study. Let's say we have variant one, which is our source variant or the original. It has three revisions or commits. So variant two, uh, a developer of variant two comes and wants to use a variant one as a starting point. So they will fork it, which means that they will inherit all the commits or revisions that uh, exist in variant one. Between the fork date and the divergence date, these two uh, variants share commits and are, do, are, 
until the divergence is dead, the, the commits are synchronized. So the commits that are in the, in the, in the variant one also exist in variant two and vice versa. For some reason, after the divergence date, the two commits diverge and start introducing uh introducing in commits without uh, integrating commits with that sharing commits. Let's say that at this point, a developer of variant one has identified uh, a bug in a file called foo, and then they fork, fix the bug, and then in, uh, merge back this fix into the main line, the main development line through a pull request. On the target, uh, on the target of the uh, git head, the git head of the target, four scenarios are possible. One, foo has fixed the bug. The developer at uh, variant two has fixed the bug independently. So this would be effort duplication. Or the bug, the foo is still buggy and yet it has been fixed in, uh, uh, in uh, variant one. So this would be a missed opportunity. And then uh, variant, var the developer at variant two maybe has just fixed part of the bug. This would be a split case. The, the foo is still has a, a fix and still bug at the same time. Or maybe another scenario would be foo is an interesting because foo is, has been changed beyond uh, comparison with the foo in the variant one. So let me also give you a concrete example in our study. So these are two, this is a, a variant which is called CACFA which is the main variant and then variant uh, LinkedIn CACFA was forked from uh, Apache CACFA. So the two have unique commits. As you can see, we have 415 unique commits that were introduced in LinkedIn CACFA. Well, there are over 1K uh, commits that, unique commits that are appearing in Apache CACFA. So these two have diverged from each other and no longer synchronizing. So another concrete example in our study uh, of the missed opportunity case, we have a buggy line in the upstream of uh, 2KM uh, software. And this buggy line is as a result of a G10 um, warning. With an issue number uh, 12,550 and 87. So the developer identified this and then patched this, uh, patched the, the bug and introduced a new line, a patched line. As you can see that now this old line has been deleted and the new line has been introduced in the project. However, in the divergent fork at the git head, we identify that this uh, line is still buggy. So this is a case of missed opportunity. Now, let me introduce to you our research questions. We have two main research questions. The first one was how many cases of effort duplication and missed opportunities exist in divergent variants? And then the research question, uh, research question number two wanted to find out how many patched, uh, how much patch technical lag exists between the source and target variants target variant uh, between the source and the target variants. So the method that we used, um, one, we searched for keywords in the pull requests that have been merged, that were fixed, the uh, keyword like fix, fixes resolves that were merged back into um, the different variants that we're investigating. For example, here is a pull request that uh, was fixing a bug and has been uh, merged back into variant one. And then we extracted files from the pull request of, of uh, the, the source and also extracted files from the git head of the uh, target. So using a tool uh, tool that we developed, uh, which uses a clone detection called Pareco, we compare these files and we're able to identify cases of effort duplication and missed opportunity. 
So this is the graph of, of the results. Uh, as you can see, uh, sorry. You can see we have uh, many cases of effort duplication and many cases of a missed opportunity in one of our running example, Apache Kakfa. And then this is a total we we investigated over 800 and 8K patches from 364 source variants. And you can see we have very interesting um, uh, patches where we have uh, many cases of missed opportunity, many cases of effort duplication, and also some cases of uh, split cases where a bug is existing. We have part of the uh, of the bug being uh, fixed. Our results also uh, achieved uh, very good accuracy, precision, and recall, as you can see. And then our second such question, how much patch technical lag exists between the source and the target variance in the budget variance? So each point on the graph represents a target variant on the x-axis and the number of weeks it has missed a, a patch introduced in the source variant. This means that on average patches are missed in the target variant have been introduced in the source variant 52 weeks earlier. So if you are a developer, you wouldn't be you wouldn't want to be in this part of uh, the rectangle on the graph. So what we learn from the results? We learn from the results that variants on show coding platform exhibit suboptimal maintenance. Researchers and um, practitioners need to come up together to address this challenge. We have developed a proof of concept patch recommender tool named Pareco. We'll we are still working to extend this Pareco into a patch recommender tool. Currently, we are extending the work um, on missed opportunity, whereby we first what we are doing that we are forking the the target variant, and then using genetic improvement, we want to uh, integrate uh, fix the patch that has been introduced in uh, the source variant, and then integrate into the target variant. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take your questions.